Hey y'all, I'm James Roy and this is my lovely wife Courtney and this is The Noise Date Night, a podcast where we talk about our weekly date night movie selections and then we give you the scoop. Uh, so this week we watched Encanto, uh, so we'll be talking about that, but before we get into that, more Christmas small talk. Um, yeah. This week I've got a question I have not run by Courtney before we started recording. So Exciting. Um, you're going to get some real, you know, unedited, <laughs> real, real raw um in the moment answers here yeah babe um so it's a two-part question okay what is the best and what is the worst gift that you've ever gotten on christmas no comment um (laughs) (laughs) the best gift i've gotten on christmas definitely was the gift i got last year from james because he was underwater and he sent me mixed tiles of pictures of us up until that point. And then he also sent me a Dodgers World Series long sleeve t-shirt that I wanted. That was probably the best. The worst gift I've, I've ever gotten. Um, I would have to say probably like socks. I hate socks. I hate fuzzy socks. Sorry to anybody who's ever given me socks. Um, James knows I'm like always barefoot unless I'm wearing sneakers or boots. And even then, like, I only like to wear the really thin socks. I hate wearing like the fuzzy socks. So my drawer is always filled with fuzzy socks that I never wear. (laughs) So please don't give me socks. All right. Noted. I'll have to (laughs) go make some returns later today. Um, I don't mind like the weatherproof ones, you know, that you can put over like your leggings. Like those are cute. Okay, like yeah. the knit ones, I guess you would say, but I hate the fuzzy ones because when you wash them, they get all like, like matted and they're not I'm, fuzzy anymore. I'm taking notes. And here. they just kind of like pick up everything that's on the floor. Oh, it just grosses me out. I'd rather just wear slippers barefoot. Like I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, sorry, I can't. I'm do all that. for. I'm all for not wearing socks either. Yeah, I've recently I'm noticed that, person. I, that I need some. Uh, I've just never had high quality socks. Um, it's not that I've never had them. I just don't have very many pairs. Usually, I'm a Hanes guy. So oh, like, okay. It's just one more step that you have to take every morning to get ready, and I don't like it. So when I can avoid it, I try to. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, no, but th- what about you? What's the best and worst gift you've received? So the best gift I received um, was the Christmas of 2019 when I got to meet your family. Oh my and- gosh! No, I'm just <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, but for the best gift mm-hmm. I received on Christmas, ooh, that's a tough one for me. I'm um. I'm the kind of person that like typically will go like it's hard to buy a gift for me because I'll go out uh, well since I've become an adult when I was a kid I got really good gifts from my parents because I didn't have the money to buy myself things but when I became an adult and started making adult money um it became harder to shop for me because you know my mom e- everyone who's ever asked me what I wanted for Christmas since I've become an adult I'm just kind of like I don't know <laughs> I just have to like come up with it but like I but he won't say no if you give him something exactly <laughs> So, like, I don't know. I, I got, like, a PlayStation my junior year of high school Christmas. That was a pretty impactful gift. Mm. It, like, a good, good time that, spent like, there. That, like, make you a gamer. Um, I mean, that you was... You got to all... participate in the Madden conversations. Well, it was Madden. And then um, what I did was is I, I went on Craigslist with my with all my resourcefulness. Um, I really wanted Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Mm. I had never been someone to play first-person shooters to that point. Um, but all my friends were doing it, and I wanted it. And so I found it on Craigslist because um, I only had like 30 bucks. And the games, you know, at that point, they just moved up to coming out at like 60 bucks. So I went on Craigslist and found one that had a chip in the middle. And the guy was selling it for 30 bucks. No case, just in a, in a sleeve. Did you buy it? And I bought it and it worked. Wow. Did and you go so, to this like meeting by yourself um, as a junior? Yes. What? I had Did my, you tell anybody where you were? I told my parents where I was. Okay. I had my own this car. Is like some true crime stuff. Met up Don't. Uh, in Biloxi. <laughs> picked up the game. In broad daylight? In a populated yeah, well, area? I mean, it wasn't like noon, but oh it was like gosh. there was light outside. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Meeting <laughs> teenagers wanting to meet up people from Craigslist. I don't even know if Craigslist is still a thing. It is. Oh, okay. With no, like I, Facebook Marketplace and everything. I use Facebook Marketplace more now, but when I was when I was from the age of like sixteen or seventeen up until about maybe like twenty three, right until Facebook Marketplace became a thing. So I would, like two years ago. I'm I would just I would frequent <laughs> Craigslist He's to find that, I, that was my first move if I wanted something. Yeah. Was I'd be like, maybe I can get it on Craigslist for like half off. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it'll have a chip in the middle, but I hope it still works. Um, That's always the hope. Worst gift? Um, I think I told you the story the other day. This isn't the worst gift I've ever gotten, but it's a fun story to tell. Where like my my dad had some close friends from when he lived in Houston, the, the Horn family. And we went there for Christmas one time. Yeah. To hang out with them. And I liked their house. It had a good aesthetic to it. There was like a record player yeah. jukebox type thing. Um, but I, I liked hanging out there, but we, we never like went there on Christmas. So we never were really like in a conversation to receive gifts. And to that point, my parents had never really had to have any talks about gifts with us because we were like, oh yeah, thank you. Cool. We, yeah. you know, it's one of those points you're, you're early enough in your life where you kind of get what you want. And it's yeah. really hard to say like, oh no, I didn't want that. Um, <laughs> but we finally encountered that situation and my brother of all people was the one who did not um, know how to act. Wow. So we all got Can't col- say I'm not surprised. <laughs> we all got coloring books and me and my sister got ours and we were like, Oh, cool, yay. Um, and then my brother just turned around and said, I, I didn't want a book, I wanted a toy. I was like, Okay, well that was a turning point every year for Christmas. Okay, so you get a gift you don't want, what do you so say? So no coloring books. Thank you. <laughs> but what if it's a like funny like Spider Man adult? stress reliever coloring book you know um, I, i'll tell you that there's never been a point in my <laughs> life that i've ever thought gee i'd really like a coloring book what if it's like based off of the houston astros i mean i wouldn't like like i said i've been trained i mean i'm not gonna say no thank you i'm gonna I'm you gonna just take might find hand. it on craigslist later on that day i want to say thank you and i it, it might sit on my bookshelf for several years untouched <laughs> like um, other things <laughs> like most of the books that i own wow um, ooh. Oof. um but no worst gift. Um, I don't well, know. What was your worst gift? A coloring book, <laughs> probably. But I mean, it, it's it's hard to say. I'm just really bad at receiving gifts. Mm. So like for me, it's just always awkward to receive. Like anything. his facials are like, thank you. Even when I like get and the gift like, that I, I exactly want, I'm like, how do I convey to this person that I really want the this? The only gift? time I see him excited is when he gets a bag of Reese's. Especially the Christmas trees, <laughs> the pumpkins, welcome. the Easter eggs. All of them. All of the holiday the shapes. Footballs. The footballs even. Mm, so good. Football is a season. <laughs> <laughs> Just be so. glad it Super Bowl is not on my birthday. Yeah, I know, right? The, the, with the new change in the probably NFL schedule. Year. It's probably going to be on next year. With the 17-week season. See, Courtney's birthday is in the first week of February. And now that they've added a week to the season, the Super Bowl will always fall in the second week of February. Mm-hmm. Which means that I'll never risk having to miss Courtney's oh, birthday. Oh, they just moved it to the second week for the forever? Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh. So that makes it, me so happy. Yeah, it's going to be a second week of If you ask me like when February. what's your worst birthdays, I would have to say the ones that were spent at the <laughs> su- watching the Super Bowl. Wow, guys, this is really fun. It's so fun. I just love football. This is exactly how Yay. I wanted to spend my sweet 16. Go Cardinals. <laughs> oh goodness. Kurt Warner's a great guy. Ooh, I can't wait till what's that movie that he's going to be in or that is about him? Not him. In it. Um that one movie, you know what I mean? With Zach, you know what I'm talking Zach about? Zach Levi, yeah, Dennis Zachary. Quaid. It's like American Underdog. I yeah, think. something like something that. Like that. So that's that's the story. Okay, <laughs> on that, note, on that um, note, I guess we'll get into our review of Encanto. All right, so this week we watched Encanto. It's um, Lin-Manuel Miranda's uh, venture into Disney. He's already pretty heavily featured on Disney+, Plus, as is with you know Hamilton and all of his other works. But this this is it animated stuff with Lin Manuel Miranda. Um I've had people that watched it talk to me and say that that it didn't feel like a Disney movie. Um and I I could buy that to some extent. Um it was a little off from what they normally do, but it was certainly to me still it still had the Disney feel to it. But Encanto is a movie starring um ooh, let me get the cast up. Um Stephanie Beatriz, uh Diane Guerrero, Wilmer Valderrama a whole bunch of other names that you probably wouldn't recognize except for maybe John Leguizamo and oh, yeah. uh, Alan Tudyk, um, to name a few. 
Um, and so when we get into the overview of it, uh, it, it did pretty well on Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb. Um, everyone rated it pretty well. Um, box office was 123 million, um, wow. which is pretty stellar, I would say. Um, but it's just right there in the, the budget's around 120 to 150. So this movie's like pretty well on its way to making back its money, which is what we've come to expect from a, a Disney movie. Yeah, um, for sure. Oh my gosh. Are you working on the, on the Christmas cards right now? Maybe. <laughs> I was doing that before we started filming. No, no, it's fine. Don't worry. I have no problem with it. Co- oh, Cor- Courtney okay. is great at multitasking. So mm-hmm. I, I just wanted to point it out so that everyone who's listening could know that she you is. basically just said that they already are well on their way to making back their money as <laughs> is expected She's for like, a Disney wow, film. He's talking about the budget. Mm, I'll wait until <laughs> we're about to talk about the movie. Just let me know when it's my part. <laughs> let me know when I have lines in this one. So the director, Byron, 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 like like the president? No. Byron. <laughs> Byron Howard, Jared Bush. Um, what president? Oh, what's it? That's that, that TikTok trend, the you know, beans, rice. No. No? No TikTok trends. So oh, sorry. I don't, I don't know those. Sorry. I don't um, know if you should be proud of knowing them either, <laughs> but here we are. Marriage, um, am I right? But yeah, um, <laughs> here it is. You know, here I, it is. You know, I have a TikTok. She doesn't. She can multitask. I can't. Those are some of the differences between us. But I like to focus on our similarities, which is that we're in love with one another. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So Encanto. Um. We'll get a little deeper into the plot in a second. But before we kind of you know do a spoiler in, in laced explanation. Let's um let's give our surface level feelings. So on the surface, okay. how do you feel about this movie? I thought it was good and decent and it wasn't too long. I feel like some movies are too long and I thought it was to the point, which I liked that. Um, so overall, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I kind of liked the idea behind it. <laughs> Just like the enchanted, you know, no, yeah, that- little village that they live in. No, yeah, I liked it too. And just kind of how she's different and how she doesn't feel like she has a place. And it's you kind of see this whole like theme that's pretty relatable to a lot of people who may or may not feel like they fit in everywhere. It's a good vibe. I mean, I yeah. definitely identified with um with Mirabelle, the main character, mm-hmm. a good bit, which is probably why I liked the movie as much as I did. It it, it yeah. reeled me in emotionally from the start. I was connected to it. Yeah. Um. But no, I, yeah, I'd say surface level definitely worth seeing. I'd get out and go see it. Um, and if you haven't, then uh, here we go. Perfect plug, perfect transition. Um, if you haven't seen it and you don't want any spoilers, this is the spoiler alert. Um, so now let's move into the plot review. I won't dwell on the spoiler alert. Um, I'm going to try and move through the plot review pretty quickly, a little less detailed so that we can kind of more talk about what we um, liked and didn't like about the movie. So let's see how I do. Um, ready? Go. All right, channeling my inner Usain Bolt. Let's knock it out. Um, We start off with Mirabelle walking through the town. She does a whole musical number where she talks to the kids about everyone's gifts, explains, you know, the madrigals are really extraordinary and whatever. Um, And then it gets to the end where they're like, well, what's your gift? What's your gift? And she keeps trying to dodge it. It turns out she doesn't have a gift. We got that from the preview. Pretty self-explanatory. The madrigals run a village um it's a they live in a magical house that was bestowed upon them um they, they were trying to escape some sort of tyranny their their abuela who is the head of the house um and their her husband their grandpa lost his life while they were trying to escape mm-hmm. but they were bestowed with a candle that gives them all these gifts when they all reach a certain age they open the door handle and they get some sort of gift that's useful to you know keeping the village afloat and so um mirabelle when she came time to get her gift touched the handle and the door dissolved. She was the first person to not get a gift. So um, that's where she's at. She's trying to find her meaning. She's pretty scorned by um, her abuela. And uh, a lot of the people in the family are kind of like, Mirabelle, try not to mess this up. That's mm-hmm. like her character vibe. It's like, I don't have a gift yeah. and I, I just want to be helpful, but it's I can't kind of be. Sad. It's pretty sad. Um, so we move through the first part. One of the other kids is coming up on on touching the door handle there's a lot of tension yeah um antonio Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of tension uh because if he fails that's that second person or doesn't have a gift yeah um it really is detrimental to their ability to um, maintain the village maintain the village so 
um all goes well there's a mm-hmm. scene where like like i said they're trying to push mirabelle out of helping with anything and antonio needs to walk up to his door and is having trouble he calls mirabelle over to help him walk over because he needs her you know to be there for him yeah so she does that he opens his door gets his gift um and then we kind of start to see the house show evidence of strains and so to this point um they've talked about everyone but they're like we don't talk about bruno who is like you know, they talk about all the people but there's this one uncle that like kind of disappeared and they're like we don't talk about him um his power is like the gift of like foreseeing things so mirabelle's on this kick like i saw the house crack everything's falling apart and i've got to fix it um because i just want to be helpful so she goes into bruno's room uh tracks down one of his visions and it's a vision of the house falling apart or staying together and mirabelle is a central pillar of that vision it's like a two-way path and yeah. um apparently bruno showed this vision to abuela and abuela was like eh, i don't like that because bruno's visions all you know entail bad things so mm-hmm. um we've kind of got a basic layout of the plot point which is mirabelle um it, it to me the plot was kind of shaky here where like it felt like the the enemy and the resolution was very vague. We're, we're just kind of like, there's feelings and she might save it, but... Yeah, we really didn't get the reason why the house why, was falling apart. The or, falling apart? Yeah, there exactly. was a lot of backstory that was kind of lacking, a lot of holes. But, I mean, I felt like that was... I mean, you, you, you get what you can and you, and you take what you will for what you get, which is that, you know, we got a movie that's shorter than most movies are nowadays. And, you know, for that, there was a little less time to tell the backstory. Um... But so eventually there's a point where she finds Bruno. Um, he's like, hey, here's the vision. I explained it. I'm going to try and have another vision, see if maybe we can fix this. And then they find a way where she fixes it. Um, things are not going well. And Abuela is, is becoming that not level-headed leader that like is kind of um, making things happen that she's trying to prevent. So she's like, I'm trying to do everything I can to keep this house afloat. Mm-hmm. And every action she takes makes the house fall apart. Yeah. Um, they have It all culminates in... The house kind of falling apart on itself. Mm-hmm. Um, Mirabelle goes missing, and Abuela goes after her. Yeah, and everyone's looking for her. Mm-hmm. Um, Mirab- Mirabelle and Abuela have a moment where they kind of are like, uh, you know, I, I, un- uh, Mirabelle's like, I understand you. This is, uh, I mean, they just had an all-out knockout dragout brawl where Mirabelle's like, words cut deep, and she's just like, hey, th- you're doing everything you can to try and prevent this from happening but everything you're doing is making making this worse you are the one that's making this worse yeah it's not very nice at all and so um they have a a coming back together and mirabelle like um sees a butterfly and now in bruno's vision they they pinpoint several his his newest vision they pinpoint several occurrences Mm -hmm. that indicate where the good path could be because once again it's it's player's choice at that point um and so they see a butterfly at one point, and Mirabelle sees that butterfly while they're out at the river, where um, where the Abuelo, for all intents and purposes, we'll just call him the Grandpa Abuelo, mm-hmm. died. Um, and so they have their confrontation again there, and Mirabelle's like, "I get it, I understand it. Like you, you're just trying to protect the village, and I understand that. But like, we need to understand that like we have this gift to like bring everyone together. It's one of those classic." Um, at, the whole point of this is that we're all supposed to love and help each other and you've been you know going against that but i understand it because i understand where your heart is and i just want yeah. you to understand that i love you and that we can make this better we can fix this mm-hmm. and they have a hug and um the whole village comes together and rebuilds the house and then right at the end they put mirabelle's door handle on the house she opens it and the house fixes itself it's pretty touching so it turning out that her gift was the house the whole time yeah. is what i got out of it she like she, she's like the new house caretaker or I she don't know. is the fix yeah like almost like abuela like she doesn't have a special power either and so with that i've left out a lot of details but i've gotten to the end of the movie so let's fill in the holes um all right babe what like good and bad like when you watch the movie what were the things that stuck out to you um i think the characters were pretty well developed in a sense where you kind of like them and you're rooting for them I think that the voices matched perfectly to the character. So you kind of just like, I don't know, in your mind kind of create this story for them. But there are a lot of holes. Like, you know, why is there this random candle that automatically has magic? Like, is there some spiritual meaning behind that? I don't know. Um, Also, like, yeah, Abuela doesn't have any powers and she doesn't really talk about that. 
I oh, guess yeah. her power is like having the house. Um, and then, yeah, it doesn't really say anything about why the house is falling apart. I guess you can kind of say that when they're not getting along or when Mary Bell is like sad, she kind of is controlling the mood of the house in a sense. Maybe, I Kind guess. of, like there might be some continuity issues with that. No, I yeah. don't know, because it didn't start happening until later. So it's like, I don't know why. Um, yeah, the whole like magical rooms thing is kind of cool because it like creates, so they each have their own room. Like once they get their gift, they get this magical room and this room is just like this separate world almost that is created specifically for them and for their gift. I liked that part. I thought that was kind of cool. No, I thought that was really that cool. Was, and then when Antonio got his, like his gift is like talking to animals and his whole room yeah. turns into like this jungle. Like it's pretty awesome. And the animals are all there, all yeah. there like and then listening to I him I guess I would have just wanted to see Louisa's room. I really did. Because yeah. hers was like super strong. So did she have like weights in hers? <laughs> I felt like it was you just know, like a We never got to see bench. hers. We never got to see Dolores's. Hers was like super power hearing. We only You only get to see into like some of their rooms and i think that with a big cast like that like this giant family it definitely leans in more towards certain characters than others yeah um but overall i thought it was a pretty good movie the oh, yeah. colors are amazing the animation's fantastic the songs are well composed and they're catchy and i didn't feel like they were obnoxious you can feel lin manuel miranda's remember, hands i don't remember it. any of them though like after i watched moana all i could sing was shiny True. Because like that little bit just like stuck in my head, and that was my least favorite song for the record. True, yeah, me too. But with it, this one, like I can't remember any of the songs, but I just remember like enjoying them when I was watching them. No, yeah, I feel that it was definitely one where like yeah, um, it definitely I, enhanced the movie. So I, felt, I liked that it was a musical. I felt like it was one of those musicals where like you you sang songs to move the plot forward, but you weren't singing like catchy songs. You were just singing songs that stated things yeah, to move things for forward. sure. But I, I mean. I don't know. That's just my view on it. Um, I felt like the animation was really there. I felt mm -hmm. like it was all realistic. And when you when you comment on the voice acting, it, make, it always makes me think of uh, Stephanie uh, Beatrice, which is she she plays Rosa in in Brooklyn Nine Nine. And so oh always, yeah, and initially when initially when you said it was her, I was like, wait, what? There's no way. Like, There's no way she's playing the lead character. Yeah, but her voice is actually like really high. If you if you if you looked any uh, up any late night interviews with her. Her voice is like really well suited to be like uh, an animated character Interesting. voice. Interesting, but no, I thought all of it was really well put together. I think any of, the, I think Disney kind of relies on this, and so to me, any of the plot holes that were there were mm -hmm. things Disney deemed people would just kind of be like, "Yeah, that's a plot hole," but I'm not going to question it. Yeah, I think ultimately it's made for kids, and kids just probably won't ask those types of questions. Exactly. But as adults, it is kind of like okay like that was cool and i feel good but there's so many questions and are they making a second one i don't see how they could make a second one no, i don't think maybe so. they're planning on doing a spin-off series on disney you know <laughs> they sometimes could. they do that like they put out a movie and then like really have like this long-term plan for it i don't know aren't they doing one for uh that one uh disney princess from uh new orleans tiana tiana mm -hmm. yeah yeah so uh, with Disney Plus, the the oh, door the is open for all these series. Oh, yeah, so I would say I would probably bet that they are going to do a series on Disney Plus. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and then kind of like see if there's other enchanted houses in the area. <laughs> I don't know. Is there other Encantos? <laughs> no. All right. I don't know. Who knows? Um, yeah, like I said, very visually good. I I'd say go and see this movie. Like mm -hmm. it's. It's definitely one of the better movies that I've seen this year. Did you like it better than Luca? Um. Oh yeah, I liked it better than Luca. I'm not gonna I, lie. I watched halfway through Luca and then I got busy, but I never had the desire to go back and see it, which is such a shame because I love Italy. Yeah, I just feel like Luca was kind of, I don't know. It was an interesting plot point, and I watched the whole thing. I had the time to do it, but I, I think it's just my Hispanic roots. I was like, I'm, I'm really more drawn into stories like Coco and and uh, and Canto. Really? Yeah. Who because knew you were so Mexi? Who knew? That 25%, man. Who knew that one quarter of me <laughs> would just really have such a strong say? Yeah. <laughs> Did you like Soul? Um, I haven't seen Soul. <gasps> Was it good? I kind of liked it. You kind of liked it? The only reason why I didn't like it is because I do believe in heaven and I do believe in hell, but I did kind of like Soul. Okay. I um, liked it in a sense where 
it's almost like because you know he's in a coma yeah and he's like in between going from to heaven well no not heaven but like the abyss almost and then the other way okay you know no and yeah so it's like super interesting no yeah i agree okay I'll, we'll have to give it a watch yeah I mean, it's on disney we, plus we have a long running list of movies that she's seen that i haven't and then when we go to watch a movie we put on things like the proposal because we haven't seen that enough what the proposal is such a good movie it's such a good movie <laughs> it's so good we really like it what we need to put the rest of it on tonight the rest finish, of it yeah finish watching it yeah let's watch i it. fell asleep in the middle of it the other okay. night okay um but no yeah i like i said i think it's a great movie um let's see what other people thought about it so i have quick hits right here imdb was like 7.6 out of 10 and mm. rotten tomatoes it doesn't say which score it is but it says 90 percent. i can only assume it's the audience score do you have some more in-depth demographics on how this is viewed yeah i mean females seem to like it more if you if you care about that ages 18 to 29 like it more than any other age group um which happens to be your age group babe Ooh. <laughs> um yeah about 275 people gave it one star but then like 2000 3000 another 2000 i mean a lot of people majority gave it around three stars three stars are above so that was kind of cool um, so, I mean, people seem to like it. Oh, yeah, this is one of the higher rated movies we've seen recently. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. No, yeah, what about the Metacritic score? I'm not, they, like, uh, over on my screen, usually on Google, it shows up with, like, IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, and Metacritic, and right now it's got Facebook. And I'm like, I know 4.6 <laughs> out of 5 people on Facebook think Facebook it's good. We know Facebook is trying to own everything right but now, but... Uh, I don't know <laughs> if I'd rely on Facebook for my movie <laughs> ratings. Just like Google right here says, 92% of Google users like this movie. Let's see what the critics say. There are 144 critic reviews. Wow, that's a lot. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really give us like a... Well, what about Metacritic? Mm, let me look it up on here on my phone. I like the phone I know, she's got interface the app. better. I've, you know, I had never met anyone in my life until I met Courtney that has the IMDb app like so much. You like People have it on their phone, but she uses it a lot well yeah because <laughs> it has everything that you need to know about f films and <laughs> i don't know what else would you use i i usually just google it but i think i usually end up on imdb anyway so you're i just also quicker like than me. i also like all the like the leaks that come out so like when people announce a project and then they accidentally create the imdb because it's probably like a pa that they're like hey go create an imdb real quick so that we can announce this project right so that it's like valid and legit and they put it out there and they accidentally link an actor. And so now people are like, oh, this person was in it. And then sometimes when like people catch it, then they report about it. And it's like a top secret thing. And then they have to go back and write like rumored and like yeah, detach yeah. them. <laughs> that happens a lot. So well, if you're looking for like spoilers for following seasons, you're like, yeah, well, like even just random shows. Like, so one show that's really good about like not updating it like they probably update it like episode by episode because they won't tell you that they're that person's going to die is Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Like you won't know until like then it's like next episode they're not slated anymore and you're like what in the world? <laughs> Just a little tip for those people who care. Um, he's like don't care. Um, Metacritic score? No, I mean it doesn't really have one. It doesn't have a Metacritic it's score. Like weird. I wonder Wild. what the critics think. Yeah, I mean, the users are 7.6, critic reviews. I mean, Roger Ebert, you know, do we still like him? He <laughs> gave it three stars. <laughs> three out of five? It said, unfortunately, that's how it started. Not very good. Um, yeah, I mean, people like it because it's a feel-good movie, I would say. So just go watch it. You'll like it. It's a good It's a good family movie. Um, you know, it's it's, yeah, it's a good one. I liked it. All right, well, now, no, let's get into our negative Nancy bit. So wah, you said wah. how many, two, 247 people? Yeah. All right. Give it one star. Should we? Let's look at the one star reviews. Let's see if anyone was creative enough to catch our eye. Um, <clears throat> let's see. More like Bora Canto. What? So not original. That Both grandchildren ages nine and six fell asleep during an afternoon show. Well, I can tell you because it's, it's the afternoon and they probably needed a nap. No, yeah, it's called the midday mm -hmm. slump. Um, let's see. Forgettable and random Disney movie. The film didn't really work nor stand out from other Disney films and felt a bit flat 
at times. The story was lacking and flawed. Music was forgettable and at times boring. Don't remember this in theaters at all. <laughs> okay. More garbage from Disney. Generic and boring CGI. Remember animated classics from Disney? Maybe you're just like a vintage person, you know? <laughs> Don't waste your time on this movie. The movie is lacking in poor in more ways than one. Poor. Like poor as in like not rich or poor as in like done poorly? <laughs> I'm not too sure. Maybe they're from a different kind. The, no Disney magic. This film lacks the magic of what makes Disney movies good and interesting. There isn't a very interesting story like, okay? The animation is nice, but everything else falls short. Not much character development. The songs are forgettable, as well as the underdeveloped story. This is good, maybe, for watching at home. Conventional and poor. Post-pandemic film have polarized in terms of quality. It's all the good movies were getting better and bad ones were getting worse and Kanto certainly falls in the latter category. It's conventional, <laughs> predictable, and uninteresting even for a children's film. Did you see wait, Wow. Did you see this one? Emotional abuse is not what I had in mind. Not your best Disney. Oh my gosh. People are really <laughs> taking this personally. I mean, I felt like it was good to shine a light like how your words could really affect somebody. No, yeah. And how that like really affected Maribel by yeah, her grandmother's I words. This, I think that is like really important to shine a light too. This person watched the movie and took away from the treatment of Mirabelle. Wow, Disney's promoting Yeah, how emotional are they promoting abuse. like the grandma literally destroys the whole house. Like we gave that spoiler already because of her like how many Disney movies have this storyline? Like the the not original I thing, I'll know. give them merit to, but this storyline has been used over and over. And the, and the fact this person thinks it's like of detriment to the movie is interesting. Yeah, super interesting. People are interesting. Thank you for giving us some negative Nancys, though. Where uh, would we be without you? Where would we be? Um, but on that note, let's let's rate the movie ourselves on our our All favorite right. scale, one to seven. Um, I'll let you go first, babe, because ladies first. Okay. Um, on account, this is our first animation film. Yes, exactly. I would say probably along the lines of four and a half. Four and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I think that's where I'm at too. Like, yeah. And like I said, I thought the pace was really good. I thought it was a solid movie, but I yeah. definitely think four and a half is where I'm at. Yeah, I think if if I think that the dialogue and the pace was really it was good enough to keep my attention, um, and I left being like, oh, that was a good movie. Yeah. But it wasn't like, oh my gosh, Toy Story vibes, you know? Well, it's like you said earlier, right? The, the music wasn't memorable, and I'm not going to look back and be like, this was a classic Disney movie. Mm -hmm. This is just a, a filler Disney movie. Yeah. Just kind of one that like they put out, and you're like, yeah. like, um, uh, Tell me if I'm off base. I've only seen parts of this movie, but like Meet the Robinsons. I didn't, <gasps> I didn't feel like that was Stop. Like, a groundbreaking movie. Yes, it was is it? a groundbreaking Breaking movie, and the, the fact of, that it's so underrated is just beyond me. The parts it's of it that I so caught good. were unimpressive to me. What parts did you see? Just like you know, guy goes back in time, finds some guy, they interact. I don't know. It was like interesting enough that I would. It wasn't a bad movie. Okay. I just like wouldn't in have the gone beginning back and bit. It it's again. really really good, and then the middle is cool because of the house and like you're seeing all the futuristic things. Yeah, and then like the plot twist is just so good. I'll have to watch the whole thing you and give need to a, watch it. a better um, opinion on it. I loved it <laughs> because I won't even tell you who the villain is. I think that's the best part. Yeah. Because okay. you kind of guess that he goes and sees like, you know, certain people in the future. Okay. You know? All right. And you guess that. But it's like how he, how, how they get there and who the villain is and how everybody like plays a part is like, yeah, it's the best. <laughs> also, the Jonas Brothers did a song for that. So, was that the year three thousand? Oh yeah, for we sure. Went to the year three thousand, and then the Rob 000. Thomas song. The Rob Thomas song. Rob oh, Thomas is good. Like little I moments. I think Rob yeah. Thomas was in that. It's so good. It's like mm. I just love it. Let's I see how far we've got. I can't believe you brought up Meet the Robinsons. Is this the one first one favorites. I thought of that I've seen? And what about I, I was Ratatouille? Like, Do you think that one was? I've saw part of it. Which one? A filler too. Ratatouille. Ratatouille, Ratatouille was, I think that it was memorable, but not for reasons How that would. How could you not like Remy? I thought Ratatouille He's was the cutest little rat ever. I don't know; it just wasn't in my vein. I see, <sighs> it, I see the appeal in it, and I know oh why. Gosh. It's like a memorable movie, but I think it's just more for me. You know material. what's a sleeper? 
like a, a filler is bold. Was that by Disney? <laughs> because that one's definitely. I don't know. I, I haven't seen. Sure. I haven't seen it. Exactly. You have to look it up. One minute. Let's. Give I it need a to look. confirm that it is Disney. I'm almost a thousand percent sure it's Disney. But we'll let me see. let me make sure. Yeah, it's Disney. Bolt. That oh, okay. was that because it was John Travolta and Miley Cyrus. No offense, but jeez, that's an all star combo. <laughs> <laughs> In two thousand and eight. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't know if I'd I'd put that in my queue. What about <laughs> Fox and the Hound? I haven't seen Fox and the Hound. Oh my gosh. We already had this We barely just watched up. We so we sat in line for the Tower of Terror at Disneyland like a couple months ago. Do you think ago. up was a filler? No, up was good. Up, I told up you. is a okay. cornerstone okay. Disney okay. movie. You you had um, never seen it, so Well, I have now, but um we sat in line for the Tower of Terror, not it's now the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Um the breakout and when and, it was the guardians of the galaxy we were in line and we sat for like 30 minutes and just she listed off disney movies and i was like no yes no 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 yes. my word no 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 i'll put an updated list online because no no yes we need to hold him accountable to all the disney films so good thing Huge we have disney, disney plus fan. so we can just watch any of them anytime yeah should we watch bolt <laughs> after we finish the proposal <laughs> For the thirtieth time, after we watched Die Hard, oh, no. Well, also we still have to watch Hawkeye. So I mean, oh my gosh, I cannot not believe we watched that. He was my favorite Avenger for like the first two movies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we'll have to give it a shot. We'll have to watch it um, after we finish the proposal. Okay. <laughs> All right. On that note, um, we'll move into our closing segment. No. So <laughs> we watched Encanto this past week, as you can we tell. We did by our uh nifty TV nifty screen. tv screen that courtney's pointing at but let's list off some movies that are coming out here in the near future so that we can have a frame of reference All for right. what we'll be be looking at um we already have tickets for spider-man Ooh, no way home so and, excited and we have this fan art that features toby mcguire and and andrew garfield okay. even, even though they they may or may not be in it. Well, that's the thing about IMDb that think, they're not like on it. So, on, but that could be on purpose. I saw some, that's how they are. someone may. So I discovered how people do those fake things. Like mm. you can, if you right click on a web page, you can change the HTML and change the way things are typed. You can go mm -hmm. into the code and it'll temporarily change it for you. Mm -hmm. It won't submit the changes, so you can make it show things that are not there. Mm. So that's what could have happened. But I saw someone send a screenshot of like something from Google or some website with the cast and it said that Andrew Garfield and, and Tobey Maguire were in it. Either way, if they are in it, this is something that's going to be like tight locked. Like it's not going to be known until premiere night, it's, which is Thursday it's or a common, Wednesday. It's a common theme Yeah, for Tom Holland Spider-Man to need help. He's not really ever faced an enemy by himself. He's never like been the guy outside. Like, yeah, he had some help, I guess, in, in Far From Home. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that was the closest he got to like being as far from home with Jake Gyllenhaal. Guy, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but that was the one after the blip. Yeah, so I think yeah. th I think they're in it. I think they are too. I think they are. And I've already heard somebody who's over thirty that said, "Oh, if Toby Maguire's in it, I want to see it." <laughs> <laughs> There's still people that think Toby Maguire is the best Spider-Man. Um, that discussion topics more complicated for me i don't i'm not like i think one track minded on that yeah i think tom holland is more believable as spider-man if that makes sense he, yeah he's the I most thought toby mcguire did great in that role and no, i yeah. love those movies no yeah soundtracks are top notch exactly but when i watch tom holland as spider-man i'm like the, he was made for this role oh yeah okay um, Moving on. Next movie, Sing 2. Yeah, we'll probably see that at Christmas. It's on a roster. We'll probably sing it to us. Yes, and then we'll probably compare it to Encanto, like another probably. musical animated movie. It's going to be our second foray into the animated realm. I have some high hopes because I loved Sing, the first one. Sing was really good, but like like we've both said, um, did it warrant a sequel? No. No. <laughs> so we'll see. Sometimes it's a money grab. Sometimes there's legitimate reason. We'll we'll find out soon enough. We're willing to pay money to see it. Exactly. Um, we've also yes. got Matrix yes, Four. Yes, yes, yes. Matrix Four uh, comes out later in the month, and uh, I mean, I don't want to say I'm pretty excited about it because I would be. You're not you excited know, at I mean, all. I, so don't lie. I haven't seen any of the ones before <laughs> it, um, except for the good scenes. So yeah. I mean, Always. I'd be down to go back and watch the first ones before we go and watch it. We can watch them. Yeah. So I'm here for that. But 
Um, also, West Side Story comes out sooner than that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we we might go see that one. I I think it's an interesting. Um, I, I don't know how to put it. It's interesting to see a major director remake such a well known musical. Yeah. Um, I think that the I, I'm interested to see how Ansel El- Elsgort does in his role as like the lead uh, Jet. So that's going to be interesting. It's also technically Disney. Is it? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that means it's probably like Hamilton where it'll end up on Disney Plus afterwards. Yes. Nice. Exactly. And then the other one that's coming up soon is uh, The King's Man. It's the prequel to the two mm. Kingsman movies. I really want to see that. Um, It looks like it's going to be pretty stellar. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to have Rasputin and like all these like really cool old timey bad guys in it. Yes, I love that. And that I love are that set era. in real time, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that'll be cool. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that one? I, you seem pretty excited about it. I'm it, super excited. I love the British humor and the culture. I was going to say it's very British and you're very into that. Oh yeah, I loved the Kingsman movies and can't wait to see this one. <laughs> All right, and that's what we've got for our, our future potential movies. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what we've got for the, the cast today. The podcast. The podcast. So I've tried my best British accent. I was hoping it might, you know. Was that your British accent? No, I was just joking. <laughs> but I was just saying it. That was the Jersey it. one. I saw your London shirt and I was like, maybe Courtney will be more attracted to me. Represent. If I use a British accent. Babe. <laughs> I'm attracted to you regardless. Awesome. That's good to hear. Mm-hmm. As your husband, that's very good news. <laughs> um, But this has been Courtney Danielle. I have been. That's me. I have been James Roy, and this has been the Noise Date Night Edition. Thanks for listening in. Thanks for watching. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever it is that's acceptable on the platform you are viewing this from. Um, and yeah, give us your feedback. Maybe let us know of all those movies which one you're most excited to see. Um, and until next time, uh, see ya. Bye.